Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at consumer surplus and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. Okay, so to start our discussion off about consumer surplus, we're going to be considering a consumer who wants an umbrella and that consumer is the person who wants the umbrella the most within that market. So that consumer is willing to pay a maximum of £15 for this umbrella. Now this is an extreme case, but we're going to be using this extreme case to build our example. However, it turns out that in this market, the equilibrium price is £5. So they're spending £10 more. So let's mark our equilibrium price on and then we'll just put a quantity down of Q. Okay, so this is our equilibrium price out of £5. So this would be the equilibrium point and this £15 here, this is our maximum. So this is the most a consumer is ever willing to pay for the good. So the difference between these values is known as their consumer surplus. So consumer surplus is the uh, 15 pounds from the maximum and the five pounds minimum. So it's the maximum paid versus the equilibrium paid. And therefore our consumer surplus is five pounds. Consumer surplus is the difference between the price and the consumer is willing and able to pay and the price they actually pay. So the, any consumer technically along this demand curve is willing and able to pay 15 pounds for the umbrella. Similarly, consumer surplus in a market is found by adding the consumer surplus of all individual consumers. So we are going to work that out because this five pounds here, that consumer surplus is what is earned by the consumer who was willing and able to buy at this equilibrium quantity. So consumers get a utility from buying a good and that utility is represented by this area enclosed. So the area that I'm talking about is this area here. So all of this blue area, so P1, P2, all the way down to zero to our quantity here up to this point I shall call X. So all of this area is the utility that is gained by a consumer. And you'll notice it's the entire area underneath the demand curve up to the equilibrium quantity. So let's go a bit further. Consumers pay the producer's price P1 for Q number of goods. So they pay this much for each of those goods. So that means that the total amount spent as a result of this is this area here. So that's gonna be the cost for the consumer. So the net gain for the consumers in the markets can be found by subtracting the price paid by the consumer from the total utility they gain. So this is the total utility that they gain. So this is as if that's their gain or their benefit. And then this section is their cost. Okay, we're doing sort of a balance between benefit and cost. So we're gonna subtract these two to get our consumer surplus for the market. So this would mean that the net gain for the consumer is represented by the triangle P2, P1, and X. I'm gonna mark that out now. So this entire area here is our consumer surplus. So P2, P1, X, that is the market consumer surplus. As we've just said, this is our consumer surplus. This is this triangle right here. And so the market consumer surplus with the umbrella market would be calculated by finding the area of this triangle right here. So here are our numbers and the quantity in which it's purchased is 50. So let's calculate our consumer surplus. So the area of that triangle is going to be a half times by 50, which is our quantity, times by the difference of our equilibrium and maximum price. So we'll have a half times 50 times 10 pounds. So our consumer surplus is 250 pounds. 50 times 10 pounds is 500, times it by a half is uh, 250 pounds. So this represents the additional utility that is gained from the consumer besides the utility they have already gained from the consuming the product. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.